the circle. Season eight, episode one. Sean, season eight is a I still think it should be season nine, but that's a debate for another day. That is a debate for another day, because I'm going to tell you this right now. This is our season, our eighth season that we've done this. But how many whiteboards will it be? Nine. And what do we lead towards? I don't know what we're leading towards. The whiteboard. Oh, the whiteboard so predictions, it's yes. Be our ninth one, it'd be our ninth season. <laughs> but we so. didn't do it for the first one. But, Sean, inside the circle, I am I working. Like that shirt. Yeah, you liked it. I did like that shirt. Why didn't you wear one then? Because. What are you wearing? The I am golden wearing, Bear. Wearing golden Bear. Thank you, Coach Stout. At the end of last season, Coach Stout sent us a ton of gear, ton of gear, sweatshirts, Tons. shirts. I think we got shorts, lampshades. I think we got the whole ITC. Yeah, yeah I got an uh, so, iPhone cover. It's pretty I think sweet. We did, so yep. Thank you, Coach Stout, for the gear. Yes, definitely. And uh, Coach Stout owes you, doesn't he? Or no, you owe him. Oh, oh yeah, you got that last take down like 30 years ago in the district quarterback. <laughs> and we're still talking about it. I know hey. you're still bitter. <laughs> I will put my own hand up. That was a horrible call. But anyways, <laughs> that is right, Sean. We just had a great week, great night of wrestling. We had the Central District All Star. We had a good week. night of wrestling. We had a good <laughs> night of wrestling. We've got the opening weekend coming up. We had um, something that happened at the Central District All, All Star Meet that has never happened in the history of Central District All Star Meets. What's that? Do you want me to tell you now? Sure. Girls matches. Girls. Girls no. wrestling. You're holding Boom. That for a while. I was, I was, I was holding that. Sean, we are going to, in this episode, we're going to unleash the state of the sport to you. Okay. I'm going to wheel out the soapbox, you're going to stand oh. on it, and you're just going to right now. Is there's, thing on? <laughs> <laughs> there's more to the soapbox than just, or I'm sorry, there's more to the state of the sport than just your soapbox. There's actually a lot to do. Um, so what also, we, what do we have today? Hold on. We also have sectionals that we're going to be talking about today. Okay. We're going to be talking about, um, obviously, the Central District All Star Meet, but Sean, before we go forward, I want to go back. There's something that needs to be said for the fine folks of Hilliard Darby who run our district tournament. Not only the fine folks who run that tournament, the volunteers and all that jazz, but also the main man in charge. And I'm going to call him Coach Moody. Coach Moody, yes. No, Fantastic we, individual. We talk about this every year. Me and Mark appreciate everything this guy's doing. It's, as Mark said, it's more than just the uh, people getting paid. It's the people not getting paid. Right. The boosters, people like that. Chris oh. Rinaldi. Yes. He's been a supporter of us from My day one, probably five years ago. Uh, Donnie Cowell. No one has ever put on a uh, I might not. ITC shirt ever in the life and looked as good as he did. Yes. Uh, Bruce. Bruce. Uh Stefanik. Stefanik, yes. Uh, good, good announcer, does all the Hilliard stuff. Big Fantastic guy. of everything we do. So uh, me yes. and Mark can never uh, tell you guys how much at any tournament and the coaches that do so much for us in the district for us to be able to do what we do for you guys who uh, love to watch the show. So thank you, uh, Hilliard, Darby, and Coach Moody. Heck yeah. And you know, I, we were talking about this uh, earlier. It, it's the idea that... Can you imagine? It's been there for so long. It has been there. It has been there a while. A long time. I cannot imagine it anywhere else. Although I'm sure there's some other gyms that could host it. My point is, I can't imagine anywhere else. <laughs> hey, they do have a new school coming. Who yeah. knows what could happen? Sean, that is the Derby District love. Now let's bump forward. Let's get to the Central District All-Star Meet. Something I just, I don't know what made me think of this, but the Central District All-Star Meet, we're going to have all the matches uploaded to our YouTube channel. And, um... Sean, there were four individuals who wrestled that night who have made their commitments to college wrestling. Oh, okay, Number, really? Yeah, yeah. Logan Egan to Duke. Smart. Wicked smart. Uh, Daniel Segura from Dublin, Scioto. He's going to George Mason University. We also have uh, Seth Shoemate from Dublin Kaufman, state champ last year. He's going to the Ohio State University. Just gave his verbal uh, about four or five months ago. And then the, I think the, one of the most recent ones, well, Daniel would have been the most recent, but uh, Jay Thompson from Worthington Kilbourne, who ended up upending his opponent that night, has committed to University of Indianapolis. Sean, do you know what's um, where our tie-in to UND is? Yes. What is it? Uh, Division II state champion from three years ago. Yes, Ana Abu Jalil. Watch the show. I yes. <laughs> watch the show. We're going to make a hashtag of that, probably get it on a t-shirt. We don't know what we're going to do with that yet. That's but, not a uh, bad idea. Yes. You just got, you just might be on to something. Lampshades. Yeah. Uh, Sean. That's the Central District All-Star Meet. You know what we're also going to do is something we've never done is given out a Rest of the Week shirt before the season started. Well, how are you going to do Rest of the Week? Wait, time out. You're going to give a Rest of the Week when we haven't had a wrestling yet. Well, you just said we have the All-Star. Isn't that wrestling? Oh, that is true. That is Does wrestling. Does that not count? I mean, no. it technically doesn't count, trust me. <laughs> I am not really for the All-Star. I'm not against it. You want me to get your soapbox now? <laughs> no, I'm just not a fan of like the honor system of anything oh. in this district. I mean, the last yeah. thing this district needs in any... 
scenario is the honor system. Have you not looked at Selection Sunday team scores? That's My true. God, those dudes cooked the book so bad, it makes it look like what Enron did, a misdemeanor. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Come on. Oh, so classic. I, I'm not a fan of any uh, honor, system. honor system in Central Ohio whatsoever. But we did have great wrestling. There was a gentleman there that did something that was just extraordinary to me and Mark. We thought like it was yes. class act. Uh, Jay Thompson. 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 After he got done wrestling. Where did they kill Born 220 pounder. After the uh, meet was over, he came over to us, shook our hand. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate everything you've done. And that was just a class act. And I expect nothing less out of any Jose Martinez coach. Right on. Wrestler as he is just a uh, very great role model for his wrestlers and his community. So, Jay, oh, we are giving you yeah. a first ever ITC Wrestler of the week before the season even started, man. So, I'll hey, see things are looking good for we'll you. See you next week at the tournament, buddy. Whoa, there whoa, you go. Sean, since this across our meet, we mentioned in the opening whistle that there was something that happened at the Central District All Star Meet that had never happened before. It's girls wrestling. It is coming full force. Sean, it's here. It is here. We are going to have. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. We are having a state tournament for girls wrestlers. Wait a minute. This year? This, well, technically this season, but next, 2020. Have we ever had girls wrestling tournaments ever before? No. Have, okay. we, have we in this state? So basically, no. let me run this by you. Okay, go ahead. Say the state comes out and says, we're going to have a cricket state championship. And then people look around and say, does anybody in the state even do cricket? No, but we're going to have a state championship, so put teams together and we'll just call it a state tournament. Mm, I, I see stretched, what you're saying. Am I stretch it there? I think I kind of am. Supply demand. While cricket is less known than wrestling, I get your point about am I stretching it. But I think the philosophy behind the idea of is there enough demand, supply, to warrant having a... Girl State, State Championship. True. And what I would have liked to see is us say a 2020-2021 Girl State Tournament to have a year of figuring out what our numbers are, okay. what our weights. Because I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, all the states and the, all the weights in the states across the country do not use the same weights. That's true. Michigan, all the states, Michigan yes. uses different weights. New York uses different weights. That's they right. all use different divisions. And what the, uh, who is that? The federation that says. National are, Federation National of High Federation Wrestling. says, look, these are the weights we want you guys to do. And some of the weights say, no, that's ridiculous. We're not doing that. And that's what I think I wish we'd have done in Ohio with girls wrestling to have a year to get information to say, these are what the numbers are. These are the weights that I think would work out great. Because what I think we need to do is come out and it be exciting. If it mm. doesn't come out and be exciting, who would we talking to about like, you got to create excitement. We don't want to get gimmicky, but we got to be exciting. Adam Terrapelli. Okay. Wrestled for Illinois. Coaches out in Northern uh, California, uh, Mid-California there. He mentioned uh, getting gimmicky for wrestling, and your point is... we got to promote it without getting gimmicky. Yes. I'm saying anything that you promote, anything you do, you got to come out good or people will never buy into it. I That's get it, I yeah. We just needed... I love the idea... Uh, Coach DeSabato. Leading um, the charge on Brian this. Nicole. A lot, yes. a lot of guys locally did a lot of great work to get this. And if you've ever watched the show, me and Mark love wrestling in any, like bear wrestling, uh, thumb wrestling. <laughs> you name well, it. the we thumb wrestling championships were pretty big last year. <laughs> we love but, wrestling, yeah. but I think we just don't do a good job as a state of uh, having our ducks in order before we put a product out there. Ooh, that's, why, that's, now that's what you're getting that's at. What, that's your that's, main that's point. That's my main thing okay, here. So. Now, would you, would you, just real quick question. Is it possible that that information is out there and we have not accessed it yet? Is that possible? No. That we, okay, cool. Do you know how many girls entered the sectional state tournament last year? 16. 26. Ooh, I was off. How no, I didn't that? know that. Well, I didn't I'm, know I'm, that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to get up here and not do my homework. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. And, you uh, know, and, and I guess the numbers went. They said last year we had around 200, 250 girls in the state sign up for wrestling. This year it's 500. They're being very aggressive with this, and I'm not going to say it's not. They're thinking maybe four to 500, 30, you know, full 32 man brackets. I don't know if that's an aggressive mm. number. My own personal opinion was around 200, and that could be wrong. But what I don't think we need is a two day tournament with seven girls in it, and you have to wrestle seven. Like a seven-man bracket over two days yeah. because that doesn't create a like excitement feel. So. It more draws it out more. Yeah, I got you. I get what I you're saying. Time. I'm, I'm all for it. We'll cover it. We're going to be at the first uh, girls tournament in Columbus. Yes. It's an old, old Angie Angie. orange. They're going to have a boys tournament and a girls tournament going the first January. Uh, sorry, the first Saturday in January. So make sure you're there. But uh, we know we're excited to see where it goes. I just wish we'd had a little bit more um, state input. So, but you know, now that we're there, tell me a little bit about it. Tell me the facts, Mark. I got your facts. Uh, well, hold on. Let me back up one quick thing. I think you would agree, and I would agree. I, I believe this wholeheartedly that the merits of the sport transcend gender. The merits of the sport, character, sacrifice, discipline. Yes. That anybody can. Well, not can, in Greco wrestling. <laughs> anybody can can gain. 
from personal experience from the sport of yes. wrestling. So let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. Your point is from a from a product side. That's all. Well, if you want right? something to grow, you got to yeah, have yeah. it good, right? Gotcha. Oh, I love it. In so, business, got to have a good plan. Gotcha. Love it. Well, here's the current plan. Okay. Two-day state tournament. Uh, at Hilliard Davidson High School. Locally here? Yep, that's Which right. February 22nd and 23rd. Is that a Friday and Saturday? No. It's not? No, it's a Saturday, Sunday. Oh, we're buying eight ball already. <laughs> bum, bum, ba, dum. <laughs> there are 14 weight classes, but they're not the same as boys' weight classes. It's basically 101 to, to 235. 235, okay. Right. Is there a team title? There is a team title. Gotcha. So you need to get your girls together and get a team going okay that's huge okay there are three things that you need sean you ready for this yep three things that you need to be a part of girls state wrestling number one you have to be a member of a current team your high school team yes basically. exactly okay. yeah if you got that you then need to alpha test so okay. now you're good by the school you're good by the state and the last thing you need is 30 dollar uh membership to the ohio wrestling coaches association who are the ones putting on the state tournament so it's Need to be on my team. Yep. I got to be alpha and yep. I need to pay $30 to enter. Boom. Okay. You said you talked about coaching association there. So are we saying this is somewhere between club and OSHA or closer to club or what, what do you think? Of I would say, believe it or not, I would say this is exactly right down the middle. It is not an open tournament. It's not necessarily a club because it's school sponsored and we're definitely moving towards OHSAA. Which we're going to wait for two years to see if it's profitable. Not to be I believe no. Okay. I believe that wholeheartedly. Okay. I believe that wholeheartedly. Okay. That that's what they're doing. And so there. Here's my here's my thing. There is momentum inside the hallways of local high schools all over the state of Ohio in order to gain momentum. And I think Olentangy Orange is a great example of great that. Great example. And they're they're mustering momentum, and they could walk away as team state champs for girls wrestling. Well, this they season. possibly this could. Season. I agree they with that. Could. I, I agree with you. Yes. Um, so that's the girl state wrestling. Okay. There is information on the boys side that we need as well concerning the state tournament. Do they have to pay thirty dollars too? No, they don't. I mean, However, so anything's possible. <laughs> that is true. However, they have moved the state tournament from Thursday, Friday, Saturday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh Sean, God, the soapbox. That's a great idea. <laughs> that's absolutely a great idea. I think this is the worst idea. I, I, I mean, I can't believe the things that OSHA comes up with. I, uh, if you guys have ever went to the state dual meet tournament, when you go to the finals at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock on Sunday night, there's maybe 100 people there, and that's including teams, coaches, and referees. Yes. There's nobody there. Who wants to be there like Sunday at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock? I, I, I can't imagine when that. When you got to drive back to Cleveland or drive back to Cincinnati, I think that uh, the state just does so much to kill the sport. I, Mark said it right. You're going to get me on my soapbox. It's just I don't understand <laughs> it. I'm already on media probation for my rant. <laughs> on press for our last year about how we do a uh, seating meeting for the uh, state tournament <laughs> teams, which we'll get to a little yes, bit later. But, we will. Uh, I don't think this is a good idea at all. I just don't. Well, they, they said that it was an, a mistake, an oversight, that they, they missed reserving, which, okay, that's fine. So but is this my, a one-year thing? As far as I'm, I know, yes. As okay. far as I know, yes. And I, if I'm wrong, let me know. But here's the thing. If it was an oversight, can I ask you something? Why is he making six figures? Yeah, why why is it an oversight? The state tur wrestling tournament makes money. You have one job. You had one job. <laughs> you had one job to reserve that daggone thing. Well, anywho, all that to say, you <clears throat> excuse me, you had mentioned that the OHSA is changing the state duels seating process. This is not so much a rant as much as it is a praise, a thanks to the individuals who invited inside the circle to be a part of the state rankings process for the last four or five years maybe it was uh four years we have been, i've been on a conference call with mem members of the state association uh, committee uh brian brakeman josh lowe some other in individuals that were a part of this committee and we ranked the teams as best we could we i think the the last phone call was like 45 to 50 minutes long everybody talked about what their region brought who the strengths were. You know what I thought so, about that thing, though, not to cut you off? Go ahead. Listening to the conversations and the information we got, people really fought for their yeah. regions more than they did try to get them. I really thought I agree with you. Enemies, like the people in Cincinnati did yeah. everything they could not to be seven or eight. The people up in you know Cleveland, we got to be the one or two teams. Yes. I really felt like it was more of fighting for your region as opposed to trying to do the best job. Not to throw anybody under a bus. I really did get that feel from them. I, I would say that they did, but uh, not so much as a fault. Just the idea that, look, 
I know my guys better than you think you know you, no, my see, guys. That was my point on Press Row where I went absolutely ballistic and lost my <laughs> oh, mind. Oh, trust me. You're ask I know. Anybody in or who was ever on the committee last year, I freaking lost my mind. Is the guy from Cincinnati driving to Cleveland to watch the wrestling? No, he's not. That's so right. how does he know how good they are? You're trying to convince us how good your team is. How do you know how good they are if you're not driving? You know That's who right. is driving? This guy right I'm just here. Saying, that was my point. I'm getting red now because that really got me flustered. Like, this hey. dude never left Cleveland. How does he know how good Columbus schools are? Hey, I you knew it was it. crazy when the cops came over. That's when I knew Press Row was getting dude, excited. Dude, I freaking <laughs> lost my mind. And I expected... Oh, my God. <laughs> well... <laughs> my God, I feel like I'm red now. Like, I lost my mind. You, you are red, but here's the deal. We, we appreciate the opportunity. I, I'll know. say this. As inside the circle, we, we joke all the time about Two Clowns with YouTube channel, but there's so much more that goes into Two Clowns with YouTube channel. We, we're, we're about to talk about it. What's coming up this weekend? We are going to hit as many tournaments as we possibly can in order to get the information to the people. I think you, they lost it here. The, uh, basically what Mark is saying is OSHA is not having a committee anymore. That's right. They're not yeah. having a committee anymore to rank the teams. OSHA right. says, hey, we got this. We're going to put the teams where we want them. Yeah. So... For as much as it was, I don't know about the committee, OSHA has taken this over, and they're going to put the teams where they want to put them. So That's right. Let's not forget that as an oversight. Boom. Um, well, let's, let's get to <laughs> no, Hold on. Hold on. You're right, and I do want to talk about the Central District. I want to talk about the Central District sectionals. Last year, was it had two years in a row? We had five. I think it was only, uh, only it was one. two. Okay, two one years. Year was White Hall, then yes. was two. Two years, we had White, Marysville 1, Marysville 2, and then we had Upper Arlington, Watkins Memorial, and Newark right, sectionals. right. This year, we've gone back to four, and there's a reason for that. We lost some members from D1, and we gained a member from D2 in the D1 section. So minus three plus one is where we're There at. you go. Yes. Yeah, so what are those movements? Uh, yeah, basically as Mark started, when the school year actually started back in August, OSHA had decided that we were going to have five sectionals. Marysville was going to have two again, and it was going to be just as much as la just the same as last year. Yes. But then the counts came out, and we lost Ashland, we lost Mansfield, Mansfield. and we lost Tri-Valley. Yes. So that got us down, but we gained one as Berlin. So the district thought because of the teams that went to the uh, second Marysville section yes. didn't have the allotted number, which is seven or eight? Seven. Seven kids to be considered a team. They deducted those teams plus the three that had actually left, got us to a number that everybody was comfortable with. So this year, we will have just four sectionals with all leading to Derby, which I love. I love the idea of it. I like yes. everybody being in here. And I think it's a yes. more fair system. Uh, for everyone to be you no know, possible be a state qualifier out of the Central District. So I, I agree I'm for this. I agree wholeheartedly. I so. think that's awesome. Sean, that there was so much in that little segment right there. We did thanks to Derby District. We did talk about a little bit about the individuals going to. Yeah, yeah I'm, you're good. I'm, I'm good. Now. <laughs> you're good. We talked about the individuals who, in their college choices who wrestled in the Central District All Star Meet. All Star Meet. Talked about the girls wrestling that occurred and that will occur. We also talked about. Um, Sort of uh, just the idea of moving the state tournament and then our central district sectionals. But we haven't even gotten to what's going to happen this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know. We're really coming out of the box. If you huh? fast forwarded to this point, wow. good job. Well done. But um, <laughs> we, have, we have some amazing matches going on. And all I can say is the, the first night that you are allowed to have wrestling is Thursday, December 5th. And I'm telling you, you need to get out and go watch some. If you don't have it that night, go the next night. If not, then go Saturday. Here's what we have on Thursday, Sean. Okay. You ready for this? Thursday. Thursday night, we have a dual meet at Watkins Memorial against recently dropped to D2 Tri-Valley. Gotcha. Always a tough team, though. Studs. There's also a try at Dublin Kaufman with Gehanna Lincoln and Westerville South. Oh. Good matches there. Don't forget, in the, uh, in the the I think it's in the cafeteria. Mount Vernon versus Hilliard Darby. At least that's what Hilliard Darby did last year against Westland. Okay. They had it in the cafeteria. It was okay. legit. I went to it. So there's that's three. Three. Wow. Three. Well, it's so sort of three and gonna, a half. What am I going to do on Friday then? I got to well, Saturday? Well, if, if you're not all wrestled out, no way. Friday night. You ready for this? This is legit. And this is a testament to Marysville Wrestling. Mary, Mary host Marysville is hosting. Nobody runs a better wrestling event than Marysville. That's it. It doesn't matter what it is. Nobody they're, runs a better They're event. inviting Delaware Hayes. And where are they wrestling, Sean? In the auditorium. In the auditorium. We're going to have lights. You know, like yes, spotlights. Yeah, spotlights. Yes, yes. Spotlights I love Great. it. If you are a member of Marysville Wrestling, you should be proud of what you guys are putting together. Not only that, though, Sean. Upper Arlington, uh, Dublin Scioto, Lancaster, and 
Centerville. Centerville. Ooh, At Upper Arlington. Friday night. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> Are you going to that? That's like, ooh. I, will, well, I mean, I'm wearing the shirt. I got kind of committed. I, I didn't know if you got roped into that. but <laughs> um, Hold on, hold on. I, I might be able There's to do this. There's got to be some more, right? I might There's be able to do this. Some more. What else is there? Friday Old night? Liberty is wrestling Vendelia Butler at home. Oh, that's right. It just doesn't stop. Well, on Team Liberty? They have a, a dual meet the next day. Oh, yeah. Against yeah. Watkins yeah. Memorial. That's how people are, man. Woo! Hey, those are some dual meets. Now, listen, there's also tournaments going on this uh, this coming uh, Saturday. The first one I'll mention is Olentangio of the Lewis Center. Always a tough tournament. Always do a great job. Also, um, Upper Arlington is hosting Ooh, the Lee Arlington Spitzer. Upper is like the hotbed of wrestling. I think weekend. it is. I think it is. It's legit. Also, you have Marysville running a tournament. And guess what else we got going on? We got two two more things. We've Maybe got Westerville here. North. Let's take a bite of this okay, apple go. and think about it. <laughs> you give me a second uh, thing. Okay. we got Westerville North traveling up north to take on Lakewood St. Ed's, which is normally a quad. There's usually... It's usually got to be a quad. I, I guarantee it is. I just don't know the other teams. Right. It's usually Perry and someone else. So, uh, Westerville North, we're going to find out some information about them. No, I know they not. got a, No? <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, probably right. Yeah, I'm the fifth best team in the country. I'm going to wrestle the one and two, and we lost both of them. What did you find out? That you can't beat the one or two? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to find out. You're that. terrible. I love the idea. <laughs> Sean, you mentioned the Bad Apple Brawl is also occurring. Um, list of teams for the Bad Apple Brawl. And then I want to get to the list of teams that either yeah, Marysville you're talking or about these teams, but Yes, uh, Bad Apple Brawl, obviously. You have uh, Mount Vernon will be there. But you also have Pick North, who made a strategic move last year. And I think they're coming along strong. You also have uh, Westland. Big, uh, yeah, I thought they did a great job. Well yes, too. very yes. much. And then um, you have Franklin Heights. You have um, new coach, new coach at Franklin yes, Heights. That's yeah. right, Coach DeSabato. Welcome. Uh, you also have um, Olentangy Berlin. That was a team I wanted to okay. get to. Olentangy Berlin moving up to D one, and we'll see how they do. We got Dover coming in from the east. Always a tough team. Uh, Cardington Lincoln will be there. Bloom Carroll, a couple other teams thrown in. Uh, Dublin Jerome, they have a player at 13 maybe. Yeah, they have a good solid yeah, yeah. all the way across so the board. So that is what's going to be happening at Bad Apple Brawl. I will be up there after the dual meet at Old Danger Liberty. Oh, okay. Who's going to be at Upper Arlington? Yeah, Mark talks about he's going to go to Liberty and then go to Mary's, uh, Mount Vernon for yep. the tournament there. I'm going to actually start my day out at the Marysville Duels. I think I have for the last three or four years. I basically watched a couple rounds there. We had... Yeah. Ma uh, Marysville, Delaware, Tays Valley, uh, Delta, Springboro, Parkersburg South, Ooh, West Graham, Virginia. Graham. So yeah. it's always a uh, great time up there. And I think there's another school up there that's slipping my mind. Delaware Hayes? You mentioned I said Delaware Okay, Hayes. gotcha. And then from there, I'm going to go to uh, the Golden Bear, Lee Spitzer Invitational, Golden which just can, continues to get better. Matt Stout has really done a great job of continuing to build that tournament. I don't know if you had this uh, crystal bar or what. But the teams he's getting and continue to improve. But we're going to have Worthington Kilbourne up there with oh, our guy Jose yes. and uh, Jake Thompson. Yes. The uh, Whetstone, Walnut Ridge. Those Ridge. Those are two good right, ones. Probably the team to beat there in the City League of Walnut Ridge. Yes. Whetstone. Felix, great to hang out with that guy. He's going to bring yes. the Eagles of Watterson there. Yes. Oh, hey, you know who else going to be? Reynoldsburg. Reynolds. Coach Forgey and Cyphers. Oh, they'll probably Cyphers. have shirts for us. They oh, will, you'll be they, there. They will yes. really have shirts for us. Yes. Uh, Westboro South will I'm be large. there. Uh, Canal Winchester. Just Ooh, a great day of wrestling. Nice. Like I told Mark earlier, like you're just a hotbed of wrestling because uh, Arlington's to uh, double duel the night before, and that tournament is yeah. going to be uh, a great weekend of wrestling. So. Well, I'm excited, Sean. Hey, before we end this thing, is it finally going to end? No, it might. It might. But hey, the, no word of a lie. You had mentioned wanting to do a top 10, but I'm going to ask one small favor from you before we get to our top 10 teams yeah, preseason. Yeah, we are going to top 10. We never I know, do I know. We're, we're Listen, new people this year. I know. Totally new people. I want you to give me, don't give me, give the people. Can you give the people three weight classes that you've sort of been on your mind lately Ooh, and for the reasons they've been classes. on? If I had to take a flying guess at this point, I would say 138, I think, is going to be the toughest weight in the Central District. Really? Uh, I'm going to go 126. I think 126 is going to be the most changed weight class as it currently looks from people outside 270 of what it's going to look like at Derby. I just feel like okay. those kids are going to move around. I think they're going to game. Shell game. Got there. you. And then 220, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I will not miss one match at 220 this year at Derby. I truly won't. I think that's going to be an absolutely fantastic weight. I mean, it's well, when, when are you going to stop by the hospitality room? You know about the hospitality room, right? You can have it ordered. Uber Eats. No, you I'm got to do it at heavyweight because. Oh, okay. Good. I'm not. You're watching terrible. Heavyweight You're terrible. So. Hey, those boys were going to punch their ticket. 220 is a good weight class. Uh, 126 is going to change a lot, and 138 is a tough weight class. Tough weight, yes. All right, deal. Well, hey, I got my pen. Let's get All to right, it. Let's get, let's to, get this. to it. Top 10, where do you want to start? Top 10, before we get to this, Mark, um, 
Usually before the season starts, people contact me from around the uh, area and around the state. People do the uh, AP press for the state tournament. I mean, for the state ranks and stuff. Give me the, give me your information, Sean. Blah blah blah. And I sent probably seven people this information of my top ten teams already. And usually people come back and say, Ah, what do you think about the three team or the four team? But this year, everybody was in agreement on two things, which was crazy to me because that never happens. Two things. I think your number six is too low. And your number two was way too high. Like, no one has ever been in agreement. They always, like, tell me I'm wrong about Stanford. I'm excited. Time. So we'll get to the top ten and let you guys let me know, which I'm sure you will if I'm yeah, off yeah. on number two and number six. Well, let's go. Where, where do you want to go? We're going to start at the bottom here and work our way up for a minute. Okay. At number ten, we're going to go with the Vikings of Taze Valley. This oh, is a team, a team that had everything go against them to start the season already. Yeah. They lost three starters, which is going to hurt. But they're going to have uh, Xander Graham, who will be at 126. I know people thought he'd be at uh, 20, but he is going to be at 126 all year, leading the way state qualifier for him. Then you add in uh, the uh, uh, Liam Wilson, I think. Liam? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Liam. Oh, uh, 70 pounder, 70 pounder, yeah, yeah. somewhere around there. They yep. got a decent 106 pounder. And Todd always does a great job of just getting oh. good numbers. So I think he'll have enough support to lead his big guys there and finish in the top 10. At number nine, we're going Mount Vernon. Oh, yeah. I got a t-shirt for you, by the way. That reminds I mean, and me. And this was just a thing where it was a matter of time before yeah. the Cornell Clang and Oswald got that thing going. We could, Me and Mark talked about this a couple years ago. And we've seen that staff coming together. Like, yes. it's just a matter of time before these guys get to the point where they're going to They had 16 guys at 6 a.m. doing weight. 16 Before guys. Can, but there you got a state qualifier Boaz, district placer Teal coming back. You got an Spurgeon, Harmon. Yes. I mean, it's just a matter, like I said, they got enough supporting cast. Mark just said they got 16 guys busting their hump already. Yes. You add that supporting cast with what they got already, and they're going to be a top 10 team. At number eight, God, I think this is the lowest I've ever had them in 10 years, Marysville. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Like the that lowest is. you've been in 10 years is eight. And this is a scenario that if you put their 14 best kids on the mat, they would way between 140 and 141. All, <laughs> you just got them all jammed up at 45 and 52 there, and it just looks like it's yes. going to be a problem. But they're led by, you got returning state qualifier Hurd, Hurd. you got Will, yes. you got Mims, Winfield, they got the uh, Jerome transplant McMean yes. at 285. So maybe they can have enough to uh, move up a little bit, but I think overall this might be a year where they're just trying to get ways figured out and make a huge push for them next year. Love it. At number seven, we're going with the Warriors of Western North. This is a team led by district champ Uten at 138-ish, I would guess. But they have seven kids coming back that won a match at Darby. That's a lot of supporting that's cast, and that's a lot of points. Coach wow. Green, as me and Mark were talking about, told us he had 178 kids on the team this year. It's like, my <laughs> God, where do these kids come from? I think they're doing five different uh, practices, practices, yeah. practices to keep everything, but they're general <laughs> numbers. And again, when you say we are going to St. Ed's at the beginning of the year, yeah. you are saying, I'm putting my kids in the fire. We're Boom. wrestling the best kids in the country. Love and it. we're going to find out what the true um, barometer of barometer their kids is yeah. of where we need to be at to get success. And I love that philosophy that he takes every year. That's so, great. Uh-oh. Number six. This is where people were just beating me up. Like, I got these guys too low. At number six, we're going with the Patriots of Own Tangent Liberty. We have, uh, they're led by Juliano, state player, yes. Fitz, state qualifier. Yes. Then you're in Cox. Russo, uh, state runner-up in division. I mean, uh, state runner-up at junior high last year. Yes. Kim was... Polarizing everybody. You know we lost to in the state finals last year in junior high. Boinovich. Kyle Snyder. Kyle Snyder. Why is Kyle Snyder wrestling that? I know that <laughs> because everybody, he was beating everybody else. They just had a they had a throw ringer in. I love it. So we're gonna be 82, 95, and 220 him. You got in tall. Wow. And then you need people like uh Beesman, Benzman, you're gonna yeah. need Stamp, and he's gonna need some of those little guys. I think they have five or six solid people. They're just gonna need to develop some more as they go along. Gotcha. And the top five here. And Mark said, this is our ninth year doing this, and I found over the uh, time that there's some coaches you will talk to, and everybody on their team is going to be a state champ. <laughs> and then I go watch them, like, I don't think these guys are going to be sectional champs. And then you're going to come into some coaches that are like, I don't know, man. we got a lot of work to do. We're just trying to, to piece some things We're together. Just trying to get, and then they'll, like, blow everyone out by 60 points. So it, you kind of figure that out as you go. There's some guys you, you just can't talk to. But the thing is here. All five of these guys like their team. Okay. And their guys are pretty good straight shooters. These yeah. guys are really good at predicting what team they are. I like so it. It kind of made it hard and I had to put in a lot of different factors to determine 
I mean, we go back to, do you do this by dual meet? Do you do it by tournament strength? There's That's a lot question. of factors coming in for me to decide who I think should be the top five coming in here. Well, let's give it. But at number five, we're going to do this in different order. Okay. But we are going to go at number five. We're going with the Golden Bears of Upper Arlington. And I just got a feeling this is going to be the same thing last year. I think uh, Coach Stout had six kids in go-to matches and went five and one. Ooh. And I think the kid who lost ended up being a, uh, well, two kids lost, actually, the six-pounder and the uh, whatever. But they yeah. got into state alternates yes. to be state qualifiers. And I think they're going to be the same situation. We're going to have six or seven kids possibly in that go-to match, and they're going to have mm. to pull that same rab uh, rabbit out of their hat. Rabbit gotcha. out of how to get to be there. So the one thing that I think maybe keeping them back is they don't have that one guy that I say, this Hang kid will definitely, yeah. Yeah, will definitely be in the state, I mean, I'm sorry, definitely be in the district finals. Gotcha. But they have a boatload of kids that will be in go-to matches. Ah, so, love it. We can't go four and three here because they don't pretty much know who number two is, right? I, I don't know. The way well, you made it sound like two is coming out of left field. At number two, we're jumping to right. here. Delaware Hayes. Man, I don't know why people are on me about this, but th I think this is just going to work out for them. From 160 up, they're going to go with anybody. They have a ton of people. They got Kane, Sue Tander, May, Robinson, and in the very underrated uh, Logan Hours at 95 yes. they got there. And then they got Eater at 13. And if you watch me, I think 13 oh. is right now the easiest way at Derby of any weight classes. So they got okay. one of their uh, town most talented lightweights. At the easiest weight. That helps. Coach Riemann and Lamb does a great job of promoting the sport of Delaware. Me and Mark talk about those guys all the time, getting yes. kids out. I mean, they got the Cardinal Wrestling Club. Yes. They got the Junior Olympics. Yep. And you will see Delaware kids, like, from here to the Mississippi, wrestling in tournaments and going to camps. I think their yes. overall numbers and the power they have at 160 is going to be enough to push them up into the top two, regardless of what people think. Got you. Number four, we're going with the Gales of Lancaster. Ooh. And these guys took a huge hit. I think it's no surprise now. Um, Might be, though. Uh, Hustler will know. not be wrestling 13 for them. He just got too big. And, and this is no fault of their own. They basically were trying to get six kids consecutive weight classes to all go up one weight. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, they're all pretty hammered. They're all yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's like almost impossible. I mean, kids grow one weight a year. Some yeah. grow two, some yeah. grow three. Some don't grow at all. So they just kind of got in a bind and it's double whammy because 13 is just going to be so easy to me. So mm. maybe he might pop up at 26, 32 in dual meets. But the fact that they can't get him down, I think, creates a log jam for them, which a lot of these teams have to do, which goes back to why Delaware is here because they don't have that problem. They know where they're all going to be at. There's no problem. They're, they will 100% have 14 uh, yeah. of the best kids on the mat to uh, chop them out. Huge. But Lancaster does have the Egan squared with Logan and Aiden. Yep. They got Reed, yep. Titan Johnson, yep. and then you got Miller and uh, keep uh, yeah. Chase. So, but they're all still jammed up there. So they can they, spread out. If they yeah. can spread out, AJ Lock, they could push up, but I don't know. This, to me, I feel like they got three superstars on a lot of people need to pitch in late. Hey, that's their coach's problem, not yours. Here we go. At number three, if a team I think can upset the number one team, I think it's Dublin Sciota. These guys are sitting on Four champion district champions to me at this point, and that's a lot of. I don't know if you know that, Mark. Tournaments are won in the semifinals. Amen. I knew that. Yes. That is a lot of points with Lee, Segura, Pulliam, and Harden at heavyweight. Then you add in the Lover 106 pounder coming in, Howard at like 52 60, who's pretty solid sophomore, and then the younger Segura, who's going to be Ooh, probably at 32. I mean, this is probably the most wrestlers Double Side has ever had on their team. Really? Yeah. Like nice. great numbers, big numbers. So you got four district champs and a lot of kids. Yeah. That that's a that's a chance for this being a really special season for them. So who's the number one? That's a great question. It's not a great question. Okay. Everybody knows who the question is, and sometimes in life it is what it is. I mean, if I had to go out on a limb, I would say Graham's probably gonna win their sectional. If I had to go out on a limb. They might. And they're probably going to win their district title. They might. So at number one here, we don't have Graham, but we have Bubba Coffin. And not that I'm trying to compare the two to each other as they're the same, but sometimes it is what it is. I think in general, talking to all the coaches in our district, we know who the team to beat is. Yeah. It's, it's a fact. They're the team to beat. Everyone knows Coffin the team to beat. But the question at this point in the season is, how heavy of a favorite are they? Ooh. Right? That's a great all they're the poll. Team, they're the <laughs> team to beat. How much, if I had to guess right now, I would say they're probably... 80% chance of being a district champion as a team this year. Okay. Now, they have, do have some issues they have to uh, work around with just as much as everyone else is. Getting Corey Crawford down to six would help out, and getting Devontae Cooper down to 120 would be a huge success. Let's not avoid the pink elephant in the room. It's pretty much public knowledge that they're probably going to get a state qualifier coming in at 160 or 170. You add the two moves down to six. 
and 20, you get a state qualifier in, we're looking at 95%. I mean, this team could truly have this thing won by Friday night. It's mm -hmm. happened before. In a yeah, district. it has. Last year, they had all 14 kids of their team qualify for the district tournament. Yep. This year, if I had to guess, just this far out, I'd say 12 would probably have it in there. And they have enough power power with uh, Shoe, uh, Shoe Shoemate, Mate, yeah. Elker, Ballman, AU. I mean, again, just a never missing miss. I think yep. I would put them in at possibly... Three locked district champions, if I had to take a guess right okay. now. So uh, that, with all the back class they got, it's going to be hard to knock them off. But if somebody would, again, I think it would be the number three team, not the two, just because they're sitting on four district champions. Wow. So and you Sean, have a different color marker on you? I do have a different colored marker on me. Give me one that's going to be bright here. Yeah, we're, talk, we're talking about the great wrestling that's going on at Upper Arlington this weekend. So we have... Well, we know Upper Arlington's Upper there. Upper Arlington, we got Lancaster. And Dublin Sciota with Dublin Sciota wrestling Lancaster and Arlington. So we're going to find out really quick Wow, what's going on here. Plus, my, my boys Delaware Hayes is taking on Marysville yes. at Marysville. So, man, I'm going to, I'm like, I could, I could sink before the first weekend of the tournament, before the weekend of the season. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who would love to see that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> trust me, my phone will be blowing up at 2.30 in the morning. So, can't wait. Sean, you've laid it out pretty well. Anything else for these guys? What is our green screen uh, schedule this year? I have no idea, but I do want to get a green screen going. We, okay, we have the uh, real quick. Setup, right? We were going to announce this later, but we have a, thanks to the sponsors, we have a new, a new studio coming. Okay. We have a new studio coming, and once that gets situated and in place, we're going to unveil the green screen, make sure we got all our pieces and parts together, and we're going to unveil. One question, can yes. it happen by next show? No way. Okay. Not only no way, okay. not even a chance. Okay. So I just got to kick in a little more than that. Okay. So three <laughs> weeks possibly. Hopefully over Christmas break, maybe. I doubt oh, it. So we're thinking January then? Well, maybe okay. next year. Because if you tell me the show's going to be up by 5, I'm looking at 9 o'clock. <laughs> You're probably right. It takes a while to process everything. Great. Sean, that's it. Awesome. Welcome back. Season 8, Episode 1. Get, get with us on Twitter. Get with us on our YouTube channel. And now you are inside the circle.